G'day, my name's Chris, and this is a special edition just on Tesla stuff. So, are you ready to talk about Model 3s in Australia right now? They're here. Airlines been tweeting like crazy. Lots of changes coming. And have you ever wanted to hire a Tesla for yourself? Well, now you can. That and more after this. Alright, welcome. My name's Chris, as I said before, and this is your space for things around renewable technologies such as electric vehicles, mobility, solar panels, batteries, you name it, I try to cover it. If it's got an Australian flavor to it, or if I think it's important enough that it's happened around the world, I try to bring it here for you, my viewers. So thanks very much for subscribing if you've done so. And if you're new to the channel and you like this video, give it a, give it a thumbs up, really appreciate that. All right, so first up now, for those news organizations out there, they've got their hands right now on our Tesla Model 3's right-hand drive. They probably have a non-disclosure agreement, which is an NDA. That means that they are not allowed, they're not allowed to uh, share anything, photographs, uh, commentary, editorial, reviews, nothing about the Model 3s that they're currently driving. And well, how do I know that they're actually here? Well, for fear of having this video um, banned, or uh, rather banned, that's a bit of a strong term, what could happen with this video is, Tesla will ask very nicely for me to please remove it and that to respect there's gonna be a formal uh, announcement and everything will happen in August, as we all expect it to. Uh, but I haven't signed a non-disclosure agreement. I'm not part of the media contingency that have my hands on any of these Tesla Model 3s. So you know what? These, these photographs right here, I can actually show you them. <laughs> Fantastic. And what well, exciting stuff. And what, you notice something? Do you notice something? What, what's with this picture? It's got a white interior, okay? For those playing along at home, you have been wanting to get a white interior, know full well that when the configurator for Australia was released in late May, all the way through June, up until early July, there wasn't a wide interior option available, regardless of performance model, long range or standard range plus, doesn't matter. So on those two bottom ones, bottom ones, inverted commas, you can't get the wide interior. So what we're looking at here is obviously a performance model three, but importantly, you know that shipping from the west coast of America via New Zealand to here actually takes three to four weeks. So that therefore means that Tesla was always intending on bringing out the Tesla Model 3 with the white interior, but only maybe recently made it available to the public. I'm unsure why they did that. Maybe it's just a bit of a marketing exercise, uh, something that in the speak is known as like A-B testing. And they probably looked at, well, there's this many reservation holders who haven't put the order in yet. And based upon the only two models that we made available at launch, we need to do more. And well, they did. And I've got a whole other story on that. So if you want to go look on that video, please do check it out. Okay, so let's talk about this, the features you do and don't get. And that's going to tie very nicely into the next story about uh, Elon's tweets and version 10 software that is hopefully coming very soon. So with thanks to TechAU and uh, all the links to these pictures and Elon's tweets and everything will be down below, by the way they managed to get these photographs and they can confirm from this special event that was held on the weekend that the Tesla Model 3 will be shipping with um, Spotify and TuneIn Radio, but no web browser. Uh, I'm kind of taken aback by that and well, it seems that Tesla in Australia thinks that regulatory approval is not possible. But, looking on the Reddit forums, cars like the, um, the Jaguar I-Pace and some BMW cars have web browsers built into them. So maybe, just maybe, it's maybe around the data plan that Tesla actually has and they go through Telstra and well, it's a 4G connection, which is great, speedy and fast, especially for maps. But that said, Telstra, or <laughs> my, I affectionately call them Helstra, charge a fortune for anything and everything and data obviously is what these cars need. And if you know Tesla's data packs, they're really expensive. So maybe this is why they haven't got the web browser built into the Tesla Model 3s. Now, no big deal for me because I've only ordered the standard range plus, so I never expected to come anyway, but I think it's a bit disappointing and um, hopefully that can be rectified because, well, segueing nicely 
to Til Elon's tweets. Oh my gosh, he went crazy. It was in the space of uh, a few hours. Just yesterday, he announced version 10 software being rolled out in the next few months. Woohoo, that's great. Um, full self-driving, like with enhanced summon, coming to mainstream cars. Now, again, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. Uh, full enhanced summon will be awesome and all, but just like with full self-driving, Australia isn't yet available. That is to say, you know, auto lane changes and navigate um, off on off ramps for the freeways. I think that they're struggling uh, with the re regulatory approval to get just full self-driving up to spec in Australia uh, so that it passes it's, it, the test that it needs to. And I can't imagine regulators allowing for enhanced summon where you can be across the other side of the car park and call your car over to you and it will navigate with no one inside of it. And if you watch the videos that are available online of people doing this on the beta testers, so to speak, you know, people who've got an early access program, it, it looks fantastic. It's slow, it's slow, don't get me wrong, but on a rainy day, I think this would be a fantastic feature to have. But I'm not holding my breath for us Australians because, well, if you've paid for full self-driving now, it's very much like you're gonna get parallel and, um, uh, you know, parking. Uh, which is again slow, and that's a very basic summon, which is also slow. So I'm, I'm being a bit negative here, and well, I think I'm being fair, because at the end of the day, I get the impression, and from all the stuff that I watch, is that our colleagues in America, they're the most fortunate Tesla users, users in the whole wide world. They get the cars first, they get the software first, they get everything first. And this is in a country that is highly into suing people, which of all the countries in the world that you enable autonomy driving, well, near autonomy, uh, they get it first. I, I, I'm very, very surprised by this, but not surprised by our conservative government. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other story. All right, so let's jump into Elon's tweets and go through them one by one and what I think of them. All right, first one, Netflix and YouTube within the web browser. This, this is awesome. So if you don't know, they recently updated the back end to Chromium, which basically is a, a web browsing language that uh, like Chrome users and well, most actually uh, web browsers actually use. And this will enable obviously more feature rich web pages, but importantly, the ability to be able to uh, watch videos streamed via the interwebs. Wow, this is awesome. Like, please, please, Elon, bring this to Australia. Imagine you're at a supercharger location and instead of playing one of the many games that are available, you can actually go and watch your favorite episode of maybe Orange is the New Black or Stranger Things or whatever your taste in TV shows is. This would be fantastic. Or you could watch YouTube and watch me or someone else. I don't mind. But this again is a feature that no other car I know of well, does. So well done to Tesla and making this very much possible. And this comes off the back of users like um, you, me, asking Elon via Twitter, hey, can you do this? And he'll be like, yeah, sure. And he does it. Like, just wow. Ch try getting that out of the new BMW CEO. Good luck. All right, next feature, Cuphead. <laughs> All right, I had to look this up myself because honestly, I did not know this game existed. But it's a, it's a rather bespoke indie looking game that's got this old TV filter on it with an animation style that's kind of a bit reflective. I think of like Tom and Jerry, that's what I grew up with. And you've got these cups and the shooting things at things and well, I'll put some footage on the screen now. And well, it's coming at you in high res, 60 frames per second, thank you very much. Wow. Uh, the, he's also gonna try and port across Minecraft and Roblox. <laughs> yeah, good luck getting your kids out of the car. Can you imagine? You know, you'll be you'll be home. You'll be thinking to yourself, "Where are my kids gone? It's awfully quiet." And that's a bad sign, by the way. And then you'll realize they're in the car, playing Minecraft or Roblox with their friends. It just amazes me that a car company thinks that. Well, how can we make our cars better? We make them fun, and this is what they do. Love it. All right, jumping back to full self-driving. The got me releasing with the version ten of the uh, software update. Uh, recognition of stop signs and traffic lights. That's pretty impressive. So, nothing new here. 
around emergency autonomous braking, almost every single car from now the cheapest ones through to the very expensive ones, they recognize the car in front. If it brakes, they can also brake to a complete stop and save you from either a repair or even your life. So this is awesome, awesome stuff. But for those inattentive drivers out there who don't recognize that that's a stop sign they're coming up to or that's a red light, this will be a true lifesaver. And again, if our politicians are watching, can you please approve full self-driving for Australia? Muchly appreciated. Uh, hashtag, haven't purchased it, but might, just maybe. Thinking about it, mm, it's gonna get expensive very soon. August 16, full self-driving is gonna go up, which I think is a bit unfair in Australian drivers because heck, we don't even have full self-driving here in Australia. So Elon, if you're watching, can you not put the price up just to be fair to us Aussies who don't actually have the full feature rich system because ultimately we're paying for those lucky Americans who've got the best system in the whole wide world. Yeah, that's fair. For those parents out there, what's the worst thing that you can do when your kids are asleep in the back? You change the noise or environment around. So, top tip, if you've got a kid who can't sleep, put them in your car, go for a drive. They fall asleep, it's, it's magical. And I mentioned in an EV, it's so quiet in there that it's the perfect environment in which to do it. But that said, as soon as you stop the car, as soon as you make a noise, it generally interrupts something about their sleep and they wake up. And well, Joe mode coming soon. I don't know who Joe is, but Joe is supposedly maybe a dad who doesn't want like indicator sounds and other noises. And that's, as Elon said, it's gonna actually half the volume of those alert noises and actually um, mute out others altogether. Um, great. <laughs> it's, I, I think parents will especially love this and others will just like, whatever. I'll never ever touch that in my life. That's fine, just, just notice that. Okay, next one, text messages will finally be able to read from your phone. Okay, this is, again, another awesome feature that uh, Tesla's giving to users. But you know what, I I'm gonna say it. Why doesn't Tesla just enable Android Auto and Apple CarPlay? That way, the phone does all the heavy lifting around this. It's literally just screen mirroring and the phone does the processing in the cloud with Google or with Apple and everything from your contacts to your phone messages, you name it. If you've ever used all those systems, they are awesome. And to actually have that integration and the apps that normally sit behind um, Android Auto and um, Apple CarPlay are fantastic. And it, you, you, you then expand your whole ecosystem. And a lot of car manufacturers now are including as standard this because you know what it takes the pressure off them to have to throw in an expensive um, AV unit because all they do is they just pay a little bit of money to you know Google or to Apple and then the user gets the best experience and it's a win-win so hey Tesla have you you probably have thought about this and I'd, I'm not sure what your reasoning is but I would highly recommend that Instead of you having to go all the time and effort to have to develop the software to be able to read text messages off the phone and maybe get Google help, why not just actually pay the license fee and let, let us use that service? Just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. I'm full of them today, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. All right, next. Last story for today is, if you've ever wanted to actually try out a tester for a day, two, three, four days, in the past, it's been relatively quite expensive and very hard to actually organize because only very few rental car companies do it. And unlike uh, over in America and Europe with this, these car share platforms, it's they're very low and very thin on the ground in Australia. Well, I'm pleased to say that there's a new one come out that's called Tesla Taxi. And these guys have set themselves up in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. And I'll put a link down below and how you can save like $25 on your first hire. So. How cheap is it? Well, as an introductory price, they're uh, putting up Model 3s for $99 a day. Okay, now there are joining fees and if you have a Tesla, like a Model S or X, or you might soon have a Model 3, and you wanna earn a bit of side income, help pay, <laughs> help those car repayments, maybe, um, you can get your car into this service and after, let's say, two or three car rentals, you're gonna be, you've already paid for your joining fee and then after that, you can start paying off your probably monthly car fee. 
very, very easily. So check them out. I've got an affiliate code below, so use that if you live in Victoria. Um, Tess the Tom, who you may know, and another chap, I forget his name, apologies, sorry. Um, the, they've put, got their codes respective for those two different areas. And um, yeah, use them, save some money, okay? And um, yeah, let me know how you go. If you wanna hear a bit more about this, I'll do a story on it. And um, it'd, be, it'd be quite exciting, wouldn't it? I reckon it would. I reckon I will do a story. Yeah, put it, put it down below, I'd like to hear from you. You got questions, you got comments, do. Please put them down below. If you enjoyed the video, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. I've got a competition coming soon for subscribers, so if you want to be part of it, I suggest you join. Okay, all right, with that, be good, be great.